Created by Ananya Banerjee, Adhura starring Ishwak Singh and Rasika Dugal in the lead roles, is finally released on Amazon Prime. As the show releases on the OTT platform, we thought this would be the perfect time to give you an overview and discuss some hidden details of the series so that you can have the best viewing experience. A spoiler warning is in order as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the show, so if you haven't been able to catch up with the series yet, maybe you should pause the video and get back to watching it. But if you are done watching it already, kindly follow us through this video. And yeah, while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel, it helps us a lot. Thank you and let's move on. The show begins in the quiet and serene valley of the Nilgiri Hills and Dean Vyas of the school is found mysteriously dead in his quarter. The Hindi teacher Chandra Prakash finds his dead body completely warped and twisted inside his apartment. The doctors think this is a case of a heart attack while Chandra Prakash refuses to believe so and labels it as a paranormal incident. The series then jumps several months forward and we are introduced to Vedant who is being bullied by his seniors. One of the bullies Sarthak locks him up inside a locker for an entire night but after they leave him alone probably a supernatural entity comes to Vedant's rescue and frees him up from the locker. None of the bullies is able to comprehend how he got out and the new dean Swami is forced to call up Vedan's parents. They are not ready to get Vedan out of the school despite the dean telling them how the little boy is facing problems coping with the new environment. Then we meet Adhiraj, a 2007 alumni of the school who is now teaching in the United States and is returning for their high school reunion. We get brief glimpses of his life in school as flashbacks along with his then girlfriend and the only girl in the school Malbika and his douchebag friends Suyas, Dave and Rajat. We also meet his friend Dinad who is quite messy and when Vedant opened the yearbook in the present time, we saw his face scribbled off. In the present time, the office peon finds Vedant completely covered in blood in front of some dead puppies and the dean is forced to seek help from the school counsellor Supriya. Chandra Prakash believes that this is yet another supernatural incident and the schoolboys are claiming that Vedant is possessed by Dean Vyasa's ghost. That night, Sarthak goes to bully him once again but this time the hunter gets hunted and Sarthak is found pissing his pants after witnessing something terrible. On his way back, Adhiraj gets a vision of a montage of events and upon returning he is reunited with his school friends. We also get to know that Malvika is married to Dev now but Ninad is nowhere to be found. While taking a group photo an accident takes place and Adhiraj finally sees Vedant looking over them. While Supriya tries to help Vedant, we see the markings on Ninad's face getting magically erased from the photograph. While swimming inside the school's pool, Adhiraj gets sucked into the water by some invisible presence and he has some visions of Ninad suggesting that he is dead under questionable circumstances. Meanwhile, Supriya tries to help Vedant with his condition and she also notices some supernatural phenomena around the little boy. When he first came to school with his grandfather, Adhiraj became friends with Ninad at first and the scaredly boy promised to help Adi get through the late admission dilemma. They became friends with their shared love for Banmaska and fear of bullying. In the assembly hall, the ex and the present students are assembled for the reunion celebration and despite Swami's embargo, Supriya takes Vedant inside the hall. When Adi gets on the stage to share some words about his days spent in school, Vedant approaches him and addresses him by the name only Ninad used to call him. He quickly passes out and then gets taken inside the infirmary. For her inconsiderate decision, Supriya and Dean Swami engage in an argument but Supriya stands still on her decision to treat Vedant with love and care so that she can overcome his trauma. We also get to see a flashback in which Ninad gets bullied by Suyas Rajat and some other students from the gang and they hit him for his homosexual tendencies. Ninad is really good at drawing comics and in order to overcome his fears he imagines himself as a superhero shadow boy whose superpower is controlling the mind and he gets saved by another superhero called Phoenix Boy, probably suggesting that he can overcome any hurdles in life. In the present time, while having a get-together, Malvika has an argument with Dave for making her feel irrelevant in front of everyone and Suyas, who is a popular television actor, now has a fallout with his wife. 
He also reveals how thieves stole Malvika from Adi on the last day of school. At the dinner table, Path gets back to Suyas for all these years he had bullied him and when Suyas finally gets back to bed, he gets attacked by an invisible force and gets sucked inside the bed. This scene is quite similar to Suyas bullying Ninad, probably suggesting that it's Ninad's ghost who is getting back to him for his previous disturbing deeds. Previously, Adi told Vidant about how the shadow boy imprisoned all the monsters in school and how they ate each other in order to satisfy their hunger. This is probably a nod to how Ninad's ghost is getting back at his school friends for torturing him all these years. And when Suyas gets sucked in, we saw Vidant was absent from his bed inside the infirmary. Upon waking up, Adi finds one of Ninad's comic books. He thinks this is a prank and goes to confront Rajat. Rajat, however, gets a burn after touching it, suggesting that the owner of the book doesn't want him to touch it. The alumni group members are getting ready to perform a drama in honor of the teachers as Suyas is supposed to play the lead role. But his disappearance creates a problem for Malvika, who is trying to earn her respect among her peers. Meanwhile, Adi is looking for Ninad, where his whereabouts are missing from the school records. Along with Supriya go to the archive room, but they only find a letter from Ninad and it claims that he is going back to his native place after learning that his grandfather is sick. Meanwhile, Malvika is the next victim of the supernatural entity, but unlike Suya, she doesn't disappear into the thin air. Adi goes looking for him to his native place and his parents inform him that Ninad went missing on the last day of school and the school used their influence to shut the case along with the police. Since then, the helpless parents are living a life being unsure of what happened to their kid. After that, we finally get to see the flashback of the last day of school. Ninad tried to kiss Adi inside a photo booth and we finally understand what the montage of shots actually meant in Adi's dreams. An enraged Adi calls his best friend names and Ninad tells him that Adi is no different than the bullies who torture him for his orientation and being different. Since then, they have never made one another and Adi was hoping to find Ninad in the reunion and wanted to mend their differences but it seems his plans have failed. On the day of Dean Vyasa's statue inauguration day, Suya surprisingly hangs himself from the clock tower in front of everyone. He shakes the very foundation of the school to the core. Vedant on the other hand confronts Adi and tells him in Nenad's voice that he is finally fighting back. The series briefly gives us a flashback to the day Vidant first got possessed by Ninad's spirit. Ninad feels they are the same as when he first saw him getting bullied by Sarthak and his friends. Since then, Ninad's spirit feels a strong connection with the little boy as they both had to endure severe torture for being different. Both of them were outcasts from their classmates' circle, though for entirely different reasons. Ninad had homosexual tendencies and Vidant was an introvert. But to their classmates' eyes, both of them were freaks and they wanted to teach the poor kid some horrible lessons for just being different. Ninad promises that he won't let anything happen to Vidant if he lets his spirit inside his body and Vidant does so to feel a sense of protection. Adi discusses his doubts with Supriya and he tells her that he thinks Ninad is reincarnated inside Vidant's body. But Supriya asks him to take care of himself as he is fighting through severe depression just like Suyash. Adi is constantly having disturbing visions but he is unable to take a hold of the entire situation. On the night of a movie screening, Supriya leaves Vidant with another teacher where soon the movie screen surprisingly catches fire and Vidant goes missing. Sathak warns Supriya about a spirit living inside Vidant's body as he witnessed it firsthand when he went to bully the poor kid again. The spirit asks him to step aside or else he will get killed as well and since then Sarthak was mum till he spoke to Supriya. She finds Vidant inside the infirmary but at the same time Rajat gets attacked by a spirit who possessed his inflamed right hand to choke himself. Adi keeps investigating the disappearance of Ninad but so far he is clueless. He remembers the time when he went looking for him on the last day of school but instead of helping him, Malvika accused him of ignoring her. He also had a brief argument with Dave who went on to marry Malvika. When Sadhak wakes up in his bed from the nightmare, we see a looming figure on the opposite side of the glass door which is quite similar to the scene of the first episode when Adi felt a presence against his door. The shadow was also a bit slow planted just like Ninad's spirit in both cases. Dean Vyas died in front of Chandra Prakash after taking Nenad's name and Chandra Prakash told Supriya that he suspects the coach became Dean with the favors of a board member. Meanwhile, the police are investigating Suyas's girlfriend's disappearance and Officer Bedi takes over the case and completely shuts down the gates of the school to investigate the matter in detail. 
The old boys meet Devi Prasad, the old peon who is now handling a catering business and when he is informed of the situation, he gets really scared as if he knows something about Ninad's disappearance. When Adi asks him if he has seen Ninad on the last day, he straight out denies his involvement and gives Adi a horrible excuse that he was absent on that day. Supriya is keeping Vidant with herself as the entire school is horrified by his actions but throughout his stay, Supriya has disturbing visuals related to her past. Additionally, Adi learns that on the last day of their school, Ved violently beat up Ninad for making Malvika cry with the Adi situation but unlike his friends, he owns his actions and directly states he did it to get Malvika and blames Adi for turning out a bully just like the other students of their class. He also tells Adi that Ninad was planning to elope and went to meet Coach Vyas for a request for leave. When Vedant goes missing from Supriya's house, Adi goes out to find him but finds Rajat instead who quickly dies as the newly constructed building crumbles under his feet and he gets crushed by the rubble. Along with Rajat's body, the police discovered another body in the same place which probably belonged to Ninad and Devi Prasad has a vision about him getting buried under the sand, probably suggesting that he buried Ninad's body into the ground. With Ninad's birthmark appearing on his hand, Adi tells Supriya that Ninad is trying to communicate with him and Vedan. With Chandra Prakash's motivation, Adi goes to investigate where Ninad's ticket was bought and he finds out that it was indeed Devi Prasad who bought the ticket on his behalf. We also get a glimpse of Supriya's life and how she lost her baby. After giving birth to a beautiful kid, she was suffering from postpartum depression which is a medical term used for a kind of depression that generally affects a mother after childbirth as a dramatic drop in the hormones estrogen and progesterone in their body contribute to this depression. Other hormones produced by the thyroid gland also may drop sharply which can leave a mother feeling tired, sluggish and depressed all the time. One day, she probably left her baby inside a flooding tub and the kid died inside drowning. When her husband came to know about it, he probably severed any sort of connection with Supriya. Inside the hospital where Supriya took Vedan to get cured, he or should I say Ninad creates a ruckus and kills the doctor with his psychic supernatural powers. Dave meanwhile is trying to make his way out of the school premises but Inspector Bidi announces a curfew to stop him from getting out. On his way out, Adi confronts Deep and convicts him of killing Ninad and hiding it with Vyas and Devi Prasad's help. He quickly denies it but as he is about to get out, his driver gets brutally killed, probably by Ninad's ghost. When the dean found out that a new wing will be situated in the place where he buried Ninad, he loses his wit and this action disturbs the buried body which releases Ninad's ghost. The ghost immediately killed the dean and now he is after Dev, who is trying to escape the school. Adi tries to stop him but it was too late as Ninad kills him exactly as he killed his previous victim. Everything seems to be over but the next day Adi finds that Malvika's badge was also found with Ninad's body. Adi quickly understands the situation and confronts Malvika who hours after her husband's death is seeking refuge in Adi's arms. He finally spits out the truth that he is aware that there are certain inconsistencies in Devi Prasad's statement. He told the police he found the body in a field but according to Deep, they killed Ninad inside the library. Finally, Adi gets to the conclusion that after getting beaten up by the police, Ninad went to Malvika to ask for an apology for misbehaving with Adi. But Malvika on the other hand gets consumed by rage and jealousy, the two traits that are still present in her personality and threw Ninad out of their secret meeting spot. When she goes crying near Dev, he along with the coach and Devi Prasad gets rid of the body and this stayed over the trustee's son ensured Vyasa's position and meteoric rise in the school facility. As Malvika gets irritated, she leaves Adi but Ninad possessing Vedant's body confronts her and kills her quite similarly to how Malvika killed him. Though it seems Malvika is less evil than the bullies, her ego and jealousy got the better of her and Ninad served justice to her on a silver plate. After killing her, his soul is freed and he lets Vedant go. Adi and Ninad finally embrace one another and Vedant is finally reunited with his family. Before going to them, he thanked Supriya and Adi for saving his life but the child will definitely carry forward a lifelong trauma. Supriya then goes to a psychic to communicate with her dead baby but as it died extremely young, it seemed another spirit came in its place and possessed Supriya. Meanwhile, Inspector Bedi asks Dean Swami to better deal with the bullying situation in his school as it might give birth to another Ninad. Ninad's parents however finally get closer and while going back, Adi receives a call from Supriya who is asking for his help as the series comes to an end.
Well, if you ask me, the series is a decent addition to Prime's Indian library. The showrunners take us inside the secluded setting without wasting a single second, and the series directly jumps into action the second it appears on the screen. The screenplay is decent enough, but the story is mostly character driven and does not rely on the plot or the scary factor too much. Most of the characters do not get to a different point or mental state by the end of the series and throughout its runtime their ideologies and convictions are never questioned. Only the character Supriya played by Rasika Dugal has a proper character arc. She understands the wrongdoings of the school influenced by some corrupt trustees who want to run the establishment with powers bought with money and from questionable works. Even the character Vidan's father directly throws it at the dean's face. The antagonist of the series, Ranjit and Suyash, are portrayed in broad strokes. They are portrayed as pure evil with no other traits that can explain their behavior. Their convictions were lackluster and seemed a bit generic. They bullied Ninad for being a bit different, but why they despised him so much and why they would hate his existence were not elucidated in detail. There are some hidden antagonists as well, but by the time you are in the midway of the show, you can definitely guess who it will turn out to be. Ninath, played by Pujan Chabla, is the best amongst the lot. His character is well written, like how naive he is about friendship and how he goes out of his way to help and motivate his friends. He gets bullied a lot but always keeps a calm and happy demeanor in front of everyone. After a certain incident, his transition is seamless and apt and we are wholeheartedly invested in his journey. His portrayal is extremely relatable and kept us hooked throughout the series. He is probably the only saving grace of this hot mess of a show. The writing of the series falters near the midway of its runtime when it steps up from a horror drama to a social thriller. Not that it is bad, but by the end of the series, the messaging felt more preachy than organic. The quick cuts in the supposed nail-biting sequences were tiring to watch as they did not have a sense of direction. It was not clear who is going where and the CGI-heavy spectacle sequences frankly took me out of the vibe the series wanted to set. But the show cleared the motivations of Supriya and turned out to be a good plot device for future events. The cinematography is good and the use of music is decent. In one of the episodes, we could see the little boy Vidan writing a term, which is similar to Jack Nicholson repeatedly writing a single phrase in The Shining. This scene revealed a lot about the character and worked as a nod to one of the greatest horror films ever made simultaneously. The visuals are not original and felt like the makers were inspired by Flanagan's school of horror filmmaking. The show's making inherently had a Netflix vibe attached to it, which I'm not really a fan of. However, it stands out in places like the design of the stressed corridors and white stairs of the school, which adds a gothic feel to it. The series is a decent attempt by the makers to create an original horror show in India. The vision of the makers keeps us somewhat hooked to the screen, and the show has an essence of the midnight club or the hunting of the hill house attached to it. Still, some of the basics of the paranormal and psychic abilities are not explained in detail and Supriya's subplot seems to be half-baked and unexplored and it ruins a great talent like Onirban Bhattacharjo. If those were taken into consideration, it would have been a really good series from the streaming giant. Hey hey hey, thank you for watching this video. Do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching Adhura on Amazon Prime. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema and series. See you at the next one. And for the time being, we are signing off. Farewell, the person leaving is never sad. It's the person who gets left behind and I'll be back.